Hey YouTube, it's ICU, and today Apple released iOS 8.0.1 to the public, kind of. And I wanted to discuss jailbreaking as well as a few other things. All right, to start off, I need to preface by saying something extremely important. This is neither a jailbreak tutorial, nor am I claiming that it is one. If you look up at the title as well as down below in the description, you'll notice that this is merely an update video. Now to start off, let's open up Safari. Recently, I have posted a plethora of coverage on Apple's iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus. If you've happened to miss anything, just be sure to check out my channel by clicking on the link down below next to my channel name, or simply look on the screen now now I will have numerous annotations if you're on the desktop version of YouTube. And with that out of the way, let's go ahead and proceed. I wanted to say that I was planning on making this video regardless of whether Apple released 8.0.1, and it was somewhat of a surprise release. However, it's not really out, or at least not anymore. Let me go ahead and back up first though, and talk about the release, as well as a few other things. So referencing an article on Evasion Jailbreak, today, exactly one week after releasing iOS 8 to the general public, public and in turn effectively patching the Pangu untethered jailbreak, Apple issued the company's first iOS 8 update in the form of 8.0.1. In addition to being available for immediate download via iOS's built-in over-the-air OTA update ability, iOS 8.0.1 was available for download via iTunes. However, whether you're jailbroken or not, all users should avoid 8.0.1 for the time being. In fact, as of now, it's actually not available through iTunes or Apple's over-the-air the air update option. Let me bring over my iPhone 6 Plus here and unlock it. As you can see inside of settings, general software update, it lists that 8.0 is the latest version. Let me go ahead and get a close up of that. As you can see, it says iOS 8.0, your software is up to date. Now previously, it came up with an update for 8.0.1. This is actually the first time Apple's done something like this. They've effectively recalled 8.0.1 and are now recommending those who updated to the firmware restore back to iOS 8.0. So if you happen to update, it's extremely simple. All you have to do is plug your device into your computer via standard USB cable, and then simply hit restore. You can also go ahead and enter into DFU mode by holding down the home and power buttons together for a total of 10 seconds, releasing the power button, and then continuing to hold the home button until iTunes detects that your iDevice is in recovery mode. And even though it says that, it's actually DFU mode and that way you will be able to restore no matter what even if for whatever reason you encounter some sort of issue inside of iTunes. It'll even allow you to hold down option or alt on your OS X based Mac computer or shift on a Windows based PC that will then bring up a window for you to select the firmware and then all you have to do is point iTunes at iOS 8.0 if you happen to download it. Again I recommend doing that if you encounter any sort of issues that's how to fix 8.0.1. And at this point, you might be asking yourself, well, what's wrong with 8.0.1? Essentially, and interestingly enough, it appears as though the firmware not only breaks cellular connectivity for a number of iPhone owners, but it also causes significant issues with Touch ID. And beyond the rather glaring usability issues, 8.0.1's predecessor, 8.0, patches the vulnerabilities exploited by Pangu, rendering the untethered utility useless on the latest firmwares and making making it impossible for the public to jailbreak 8.0.1 untethered on any device. And as for 8.0.1 itself, the update comes bearing a revised build number of 12A402, which was intended to improve a number of complications that afflicted 8.0. And among the number of bug corrections, 8.0.1 addresses an issue that causes apps to not interface with HealthKit properly, and others that complicate third-party keyboards, the photo library, reachability, videos not playing properly via Safari, and more. And with that being said, in light of the aforementioned problems with 8.0.1 being the fact that it breaks cellular connectivity and Touch ID, all iDevice owners should steer clear of updating to 8.0.1 until Apple corrects said problem. Also, for those of you who wish to maintain your device's jailbroken state, avoid updating to iOS 8, and this includes 8.0.1 and any subsequent updates at all costs as Pangu and the evaders are still working diligently on the next untethered jailbreak. 
In summary, it won't be possible to jailbreak 8.0.1 untethered on any device until a new tool is made available and all users should stay on 8.0 provided they made the update to iOS 8 in the first place. Otherwise, if you are jailbroken on iOS 7 through 7.1.2, stay where you're at because you won't be able to jailbreak unless of course you just want to experience some of the features in iOS 8. With that being said though, you won't be able to downgrade back to 7.1.2 unfortunately. So stay where you are if you're jailbroken. And moving on, let's actually discuss some updates in the world of jailbreaking. There have been a couple of new developments as of late. First of all, as I mentioned before in a number of videos, primarily my update video from last week discussing the iOS 8 jailbreak status, I mentioned how there are numerous jailbreak teams that are currently racing to develop the next untethered jailbreak tool for iOS iOS 8 and how said race will be a quote bloodbath, according to famed hacker Stefan Esser, who's better known throughout the jailbreak community as Ionic. Now, Esser was previously spot on when suggesting that the next untethered jailbreak utility at the time, Evasion 7 had been patched by 7.1 and Pangu was not anyone's radar, would be born from the labor of a new Chinese based dev team. But now, in a more recent and certainly more tantalizing update, ensuing iOS 8's official public release last Wednesday, the Pangu team confirmed that they're currently hard at work on their version of an iOS 8 jailbreak. Again though, I have already confirmed in the past that Pangu would set to work immediately following, if not prior to iOS 8's release. Furthermore, the Evaders, the prominent group on the jailbreak scene responsible for developing the first iOS 6 and iOS 7 untethered jailbreak utilities, have also begun work on their utility. In fact, one of the more prominent members being Muscle Nerd purchased two 128GB iPhone 6 Plus models, undoubtedly for jailbreak development and testing purposes. Now that's where this update ends, and it actually continues off of what Muscle Nerd said. So let's go ahead and jump over to this other article here, and we'll discuss some more information related to the next untethered jailbreak. So again, Muscle Nerd of the Evaders tweeted out a clue as to the team's second informal iPhone 6 Plus iOS 8 jailbreak update. So in what's undeniably, so in what's undeniably been the most important iOS 8.0 and now 8.0.1 and up jailbreak update yet, the famed hacker may have inferred that the iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus could be riddled with new bugs for potential use in the next iOS 8 evasion jailbreak. Now in his tweet, Muscle Nerd said that the quote i6 or iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus iBoot log, parentheses N56, compared to K93, hints at lots of new, potentially buggy code. Now while it may not sound like a substantial update to those unfamiliar with the incredible, tedious, and mind-boggling art that is jailbreak development, it's extraordinary news. In short, if there's a lot of quote buggy code in iBoot for the iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus, that means that said code has the potential to be exploited and incorporated into an iOS 8 jailbreak break along with other exploits. Also, Muscle Nerd's latest tweet of interest seems to suggest that after obtaining at least two 128GB iPhone 6 Plus models, as I mentioned previously, the evaders may very well have entered the vulnerability discovery, exploitation, and testing phase of creating the next jailbreak for iOS 8. And finally, considering the intense competition between Pangu, the evaders, and other Chinese-based teams who, like Pangu, will be funded to race for a release by a third party Chinese company or companies with monetary interest in jailbreaking will almost certainly receive an iOS 8 jailbreak sooner than in years past. And that's everything I have for you guys as of now related to jailbreaking, some really exciting stuff. We have the Evaders as well as Pangu now working on the next untethered iOS 8 jailbreak. They have their hands on the iPhone 6 and the iPhone 6 Plus with their all new A8 processors. iOS 8.0 was released temporarily followed by a quick poll of the firmware. We should expect another update relatively soon, and once it's out, the teams can then go to work applying what they've discovered to that firmware, and we'll know more from there. Again, I will keep you guys fully updated along the way of everything related to the next iOS 8 and 8.0.1 plus untethered jailbreak utility for all devices, of course, including the all new iPhone 6 Plus 
Plus. And if you happen to miss any of my coverage on the absolutely incredible device or its smaller 4.7 inch counterpart being the regular iPhone 6, just be sure to check out my channel. Also, for those of you who don't know, and for those of you who don't know, I am currently holding an iPhone 6 giveaway. So if you're interested in winning the device for free, just be sure to rate this video up, leave a relevant comment down below in the comment section and download free app life by visiting bit.ly forward slash get free app life or simply freeapplife.com inside of mobile safari. After hitting download, press the home button, open the app, and if you're on iOS 8, download the temporary secure profile, which is strictly used for associating your device with its proper account in a more secure manner on the latest firmware. It's never even installed on your device as it's immediately deleted once your account has been created or reassociated. After that, simply download sponsored apps for points and refer friends. Each download and each referral counts as one entry. Points can then be used for various prizes, including paid apps, gift cards, and electronic devices. And of course, if you guys want to be updated more often, such as when I cover various things like jailbreaking, iOS 8, 8.0.x, the iPhone 6, the iPhone 6 Plus, the forthcoming Apple Watch, and anything else related to Apple, just be sure to like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. And until next time, this is ICU, signing out.